So down here in the chicken uh, run, haven't been here in a long time with you. You can see all the feathers laying around. The chickens are going through their molt. They go through the molt each year. They lose their feathers and regrow new ones. And typically, egg production slows down during this time quite a bit. And that's because you're, they're using their energy to regrow feathers instead of making eggs. I wish we had more than what we do right now. You may recall I've said that last November, so almost a year ago, we had a dog attack nine of our chickens. Don't quote me in the numbers. I think it was nine chickens. Fortunately, these guys were in a separate chicken coop. We had two chicken coops. We got the primary chicken coop, and then we have an IBC tank, a little plastic tank, that we made into a chicken coop. And they were the chicks, the little chicks, were in there. Thing is, is that week, we were thinking about transferring them into the big coop. So fortunately, they didn't get all the chickens. We've resolved the problem, so no more dog attacks anymore. What it was, the subscribers asked us to put windows into the chicken coop, and so we did. Well, the, a dog was able to break through those windows, so I've got it all back put together with metal sheeting again, so they, they won't get into it. Then the other problem we had is we were gonna incubate some eggs this last spring, which would have given us probably 10, 20 more chickens. You don't know how many roosters you're gonna get, so it's hard to say. So we got, I think, 23 spot incubator. I think that's what it is. So, you know, maybe 12 chickens would have been hens if we said 50% or something like that. Well. The rooster we had broke his foot. He was huge. He was one of these white chickens called a Brahma. These are the hens. He weighed every bit of 15 pounds easy. He was huge. Well, he jumped down from his chicken roost, which isn't that high up, and I guess he broke his foot. So he was hobbling along for a few days. Of course, we had to put him down. We bought this black chicken here. He, he wasn't old enough. So we wanted to incubate in the springtime because if you don't incubate by June 1st, you won't get any eggs for a full year. Whereas if you incubate before June 1st, they'll start producing eggs in August. By the time he started mating with the hens, it was at least July. So we'd have just been incubating chickens to for no reason. It would have cost too much money. So our food cost is pretty inexpensive. I mean, we do buy chicken feed, but we don't use a lot of it. Carolyn makes a lot of their food she ferments food and i've talked about all this before i know people want me to talk about it again i'm going to be honest i don't know a lot about it carolyn does all that and by the time i'm trying to figure out what she's doing it's already done she did buy some alfalfa and you can use a little handful of alfalfa soak it in water the one thing i really do like is she sprouts sunflower seeds now we have learned we bought a bag of sunflower seeds a couple years ago and apparently it was heat treated and those don't sprout so you got to get unheat treated sunflower seeds of course they'll eat the sunflower seeds but if you sprout them you can turn a 50 pound bag of sunflower seeds into 250 pounds and then the other thing she does is in the winter time she takes uh, cracked corn and feeds to them and that keeps them warm two ways it keeps them warm one is carbohydrates carbohydrates is sugar so they're burning that sugar so you feed it to them right before they go to bed and they'll stay warm overnight the other thing it does is it gets them fatter. It's not the healthiest thing to do, but it does keep them warm. Chickens actually do better in the winter time, especially like those white birds I just showed you. They are a winter bird. They actually have feathers on their feet, so they're pretty hardy in the winter. The other thing we have to acknowledge is snow. They don't like snow at all. They don't want to get their feet cold. We keep that covered up so the snow doesn't go in there, but still, snow still will go in there, so I shovel it out as soon as I can. Now on really cold days, when it gets down to negative temperatures, I don't like doing it. I feel like I'm a bad human for doing it, but I keep them in the chicken coop. I don't let them come out and run. We got this blanket, the old blanket we had, and we put it over the chicken coop. That helps insulate the inside. I put a light in there so they know it's daytime, so they can still lay their eggs. I put the food and water in there, and I come in and I cycle out the water every few hours. But with all that body heat of those chickens in there, you can raise the temperature up to above freezing sometimes. So it's zero degrees outside. It's gonna get cold tonight. It's gonna get down to 39 degrees. So this year we haven't had a lot of success with chickens. I mean, here's the thing I like to say is it wasn't catastrophic. People always ask me what I'm gonna do in SHTF if we lose all our chickens. Well, we'll never lose all our chickens. Maybe, Initially, it will look devastating, but let's say 
some disease came through and wiped them all out. Well, we always have about a dozen eggs, maybe two dozen eggs laying around that are fertilized, meaning you got a rooster. Of course, we lost a rooster, but they're always fertilized and they'll stay fertilized for, I think, seven days. So you keep them at room temperature. Don't get them too cold. Don't get them too hot. And you can do that with fresh farm eggs. So they don't wash them. Don't wash your eggs. And they have a coating on them that keeps them fresh for, I believe, 30 days. Don't quote me. You can Google it. Anyway, for seven days, those chicken eggs can be put into the incubator. So if we had lost all our chickens one day, I would immediately go inside and we would start incubating those eggs. That would get us back into the running if something were to happen now we have enough food on hand that we can up chicken and different things we could eat the canned food while those chickens were growing up and getting to a point where they could hatch eggs now the other problem is is that you would have the same father for all the chickens so that would be a little bit of a problem because then you'd have a rooster and a hen that were at least half sister and brother I mean, in the SHTF, what else could you do? But it would start giving us some eggs eventually, and we could start butchering the, the rest of the roosters. And then you would just start incubating all the time. Every hatch cycle, they'd come out of the incubator, you'd throw more eggs in. And you would have a constant supply of food at that point. All right, I'm gonna go into camper. Now, as you know, the Carol and I can our food. Meat, we're carnivores. So I've showed you in the last couple canning sessions that we were canning chicken. So here's a jar of chicken I canned. Now you can see it's got a tattler lid on it with a separate ring. That's a two-piece lid. Those lids are reusable. Now they don't seal quite as well, or have a good seal rate, I should say, as metal lids. But in an SHTF situation, you would always have lids available. You just might have to can some more. So you can see there's a ring and the lid. The ring lasts for 10 uses, but we have enough rings that would last us a lifetime. Another thing we do with chicken is we can go to save a lot and we can pick up a bag of chicken for, right now they're like $6.99 for 10 pounds. So we get three bags of it and we come home, I let it thaw out and then we can it three days later. Now we use a lot of that for cat because we find it's cheaper to feed the cat the chicken out of that can there than it is to buy canned food. Now there is a problem with that chicken. It varies in price significantly. And a lot of people seem to think that this is some conspiracy that the government's after us with. Well, if you understand supply and demand, basic economics, economics 101, you probably learned it in high school. When more people are buying things, the prices go up. When, when people stop buying things, the prices go down. If people are buying a lot of it, there's not a lot of supply, but a lot of demand, so prices go up. So you'll notice this chicken will always go up in price as the season starts to turn warmer, so summertime. And the reason is everybody's buying this chicken to go out barbecuing or camping or something like that. What are you going to do with a 10 pound bag of chicken in the winter time? I mean, you might put it in the oven, and, but that's way too much food for one meal. And you got to thaw it out if you're going to fry it up. So that's a lot of chicken. 10 pounds of chicken is a lot of chicken. So people typically don't buy it in the winter time. But we do because in the winter time, we've seen it as low as 39 cents a pound, so $3.90. And like I said, right now it's $6.90. So it's starting to come down in price. So all these people, these conspiracy theorists, well, just how when everything's going to heck in a handbasket, that's when they're going to raise the prices of chicken. No, just go to save a lot. I mean, the problem is, is people are going to these fancy grocery stores with union employees. Prices are through the roof. They got this produce section with fresh vegetables and fruits and it looks like a Hawaiian buffet. And they expect the prices to go low. Go to save lot. Oh, you can't go to save lot. Those foods are just contaminated with all kinds of garbage. Well, they are at the other places too. Now, if you're wanting some sort of specialized meat, go to your local butcher. And then we'll talk about prices. You can pick up meat pretty cheap. I will admit over the last two or three times we went shopping, our, the cost of our food has went up. We used to be able to buy 
a month's worth of meat, because like I said, we're carnivores, for under $200 a month. But it's starting to get up there where we're spending $200, and then we'll go again mid-month and spend another 100 bucks. So our prices have went up. So I, I do admit it, but it's still cheaper than going to these fancy grocery stores. The other thing is, is people buy too much garbage. The sodas and the juices and the processed foods. If you go on a carnivore diet, your costs drop dramatically. Uh, dramatically. Because you don't need as much food. If you're eating carbs, it's like rice, which I wanted to mention about rice. We have all kinds of rice laying around that we bought years ago. And since we're carnivores, we're not eating it. Well, Carolyn's been cooking that rice up and giving it to the chickens. Again, that's like corn, high carbohydrates, high sugar. So there's another way to reduce our cost on chicken food is if you got scrap food around that you don't want, give it to them. I suspect that we pay about 90 cents a dozen for our chicken eggs. Now remember, we also butcher our chicken, so we get the meat out of that too. What I try to do when I go in the store, Carolyn is a shopper, she'll, she'll shop and shop. I run through the meat aisle and I check all the prices on everything. Of course, we get bacon. Bacon is just something that Carol and I like to have for breakfast. Now, we don't buy the individual package, one pound bacons. You can get this 20 pound or 10, maybe it's 10 pound box of bacon. Oh, you can't have that. That's high in fat. Well, yeah, because we're carnivores. <laughs> but then everything else, I look to see what the lowest price is. Everything, all through the meat aisle, whatever the lowest per pound price is and however much they got of it we just throw it into the cart there's this big hoopla going on about chicken prices are going through the roof it was the one last vestige of food and now they're going to starve us to death because we can't afford chicken so it's predicted that this year people will increase their chicken intake to 100 pounds per person i don't know what it was before but that's fine we probably eat more than 100 pounds easy me and carolyn so what has happened is tyson foods is raising their prices on their chickens. Now, so there has been something going on crazy with Tyson Foods. Being from Missouri, Missouri has several Tyson food plants and they're shutting them down. I don't know why, and quite frankly, I don't care. Tyson is a rich man's food. There's no reason to go out and get Tyson food. They have their own breed of chickens and they, if, if you want a cheap chicken, go raise your own chickens. But if you go and do what I'm suggesting, go buy the bag chicken, throw it in your freezer, and cook it up in the summertime, and then on the grill if you want it, if you don't want to heat up your kitchen, and then freeze the individual pieces. When you're hungry, you come out, you thaw it out, put it in the microwave, whatever. Of course, we don't have a microwave. Or you can can it. And I've got a bunch of videos on my channel. Just go to my channel, go to playlist, You'll see canning and you'll see me canning the chicken. You'll see me canning the pork and hamburger. I mean, I, I can't even think of all the things that we can, but we use tattler lids or regular lids like that. And it's just not that hard to do. If you go buy yourself a canner from Walmart, the biggest cost is getting jars. Now there is a way to save money on that. You can go to yard sales, look on Facebook marketplace. You can find jars everywhere. I mean, people just give them away. We actually found a canner for like $30 or I don't remember. It was pretty cheap through Facebook Marketplace. So we bought one from Walmart, the cheap one, I think 16 quart Presto. And then we found an identical one at Facebook Marketplace. We went and got that, saved us a bunch of money. So we have two canners. We can can 20 pint jars in one session. And now we're starting to can the broth. We've canned the broth in the past, but we had so much of it and we didn't know what to do with it. But Carolyn's making this egg drop soup in it. So not only we're getting eggs, the broth, and also we're getting chicken because she puts chicken meat into it. There's ways to save on, on meat and still be healthy. Carolyn and I are very healthy. You're not gonna survive. Let's say this, this, you're worried about survival and SHTF. You're not gonna survive on vegetables. You're not gonna make it. Oh, I can tomatoes and I can make canned green beans. Well, I, I can't tell you how many acres of food you would need to be able to survive on your garden for an entire year. It's just not doable. But if you start to figure out how to process your meats, can your meats, only eat meat, you don't need as much food. I was saying about rice, you go to a Chinese restaurant, you eat Chinese food, you spend $20 a plate, 
I don't know how much it is, but let's just say it's $20 a plate. And then you leave and 10 minutes later you're hungry again. That's because the rice is sugar. It went down in your system, it burned off, made a bunch of calories that you didn't need, and now you're hungry again, so you're going to eat again. So you have to go back in the restaurant and spend another $20 to get hungry full again. Or you can eat half a pint of chicken like this and be good to go until your next meal. You're not hungry. You're not snacky. Nothing. That's how you save money. You learn how to control your diet. Carbohydrates isn't the way to go. So if you click this up next box, take to a video where I was talking about it's illegal for Carolyn to live here. So I hope I can inspire you to eat healthy so you can save costs when you live in your dreams. Thanks for watching.